uh, Dr. Alex is going to talk to us uh, on a topic on uh, uniquely colorable trees. Uh, Dr. Alex, please uh, feel free to talk to us. Welcome, everybody, and uh, let's listen to him and uh, we'll engage with him towards the end. Thanks. Well, thank you, Karai, for that uh, kind introduction. And uh, I want to also say thank you to everyone that um, has taken out time and their busy to attend uh, today's talk, both on site and then uh, virtually. I appreciate your time. And then also thank you to COE Mass for the opportunity to present um, my our recent uh, research on the uniquely colorable tree. So in particular, we are going to be looking at um, uniquely three kinds of packable tree. And then this is a joint work with uh, Michael Dolphin, Elizabeth Young, and then from Simon Mukwendi. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a disclaimer because yes, someone was asking me, Trees and then colorable. Uh, uh, is it the kind of coloring that the kindergarten, uh, the high school students do? Or is it the trees that um, that are outside that I want to um, color? So that's not exactly what um, we are going to be doing. So I'm going to just show you a little bit. So this is the kind of uh, tree that I'm going to be talking about. You can see on the slide uh, there is. Uh, 11 and then there is one G. So the kind of tree that I'm talking about is that kind of structures that have uh, nodes and lines. So tree is a special uh, kind of what we call a graph. But this kind of graph again, another disclaimer is that it's not the graph of functions that you know from high school again. So it's Graph, by when we talk about graph, we are only talking about a mathematical structure that consists of a set of nodes, which we normally call vertices, and then they are joined by a set of links, which we call the edges. So these are the kind of things, and three is the special type of this graph. You can see there is no cycle in the node uh, structure T. So when we mean cycle, we can't have something that goes from uh, B prime to the other one, like you know, like and, the, and come back to its origin. So that's the kind of structures that we want to look at. And then by graphs, we know that we can model any real life network using this kind of structure. For example, if we are looking at a transportation network, then maybe I will use um how train, like the how train, for example, the train station. So the train, the, the stations will become our nodes. And then the rails in between will become the edges. Then if I want to look at social network as well, then I want to look at, okay, the people who represent the vertices. And then my connection with people, maybe I'm a friend to someone and this person is also another friend to another person. Then I can use this link to connect them. So these are the kind of things that we look about. So these are, so we use graph to model this structure and uh, this uh, network. Or maybe in, com uh, in communication network, maybe wireless communication network, which is the focus of this talk, then you can also look at it. Maybe that the, the processors or the transmitters becomes your nodes, and then the fiber connections or the channel wires that you're using between these things becomes the, the, the edges. And in, interestingly, what we are interested in is we are interested in the distances because of the important role that the distances play in, in analysis of graph because we are always interested what is the distance between U and then B prime. So it means that we're looking at the shortest uh, path from U to V. There are several paths that you can take. We now count the number of edges in U and V and we take the shortest one. So that will become the distance. So we have the parameters like the diameter or maybe the radius. So many other parameters that we look because once you have a structure that is representing a network, then you can now say, oh, this is what my graph looks like, and then I can begin to um, analyze it. So my, I will just give a brief introduction of or motivation of what our uh, that motivated the, the, the research we are doing. 
then take you through the packing coloring, give you some a, a little bit of an example or existing results on packing somatic number. Then I will just tell you about our um, main results, which are the uniquely free chiral factor trees. How do we characterize these trees? And then we discuss the monotonicity of our packing coloring. So as we all know, where if we look at the wireless communication, most of the phones that we are using or the radio or TV broadcasting, they are all part of wireless communication. And one interesting thing that arises in, in, in these uh, applications is the frequency assignment problem. They have different, um, how do we assign frequencies to these um, transmitters or what are the restrictions that are happening there? These are the things that we uh, that arise in. So there are several modeling ideas how you can model them. Maybe you want to treat the interference among the wireless signals, or maybe you want to see how many frequencies do I have available, or how and what is the area or the broadcast area? How do I even distribute this thing? So that that leads to say that the frequency assignment problem is asking us how can I assign frequencies? So uh, transmitters in a wireless network, so that um, each transmitter assigned the frequency, the, the broadcast cannot even interfere with the other one. So due to some of these uh, rising demands, the frequency spectrum will become a very scarce, and then there is need that we try to minimize it. So, and because we have already mentioned that we can model this using graphs, so the frequency assignment problem has inspired a lot of graph coloring uh, problems. One of them is the distance um, leveling of graphs, and then we have the L21 coloring problem, and then we have the parking coloring problem, which is what we want to look at today. So I'm not going to dwell more on the distance uh, constraint leveling, which assumes that the distance between the transmitters influences uh, possible interference. The one I'm going to be focused more on is the parking coloring which arises from the fact that we there are some risks. The plan is done in the broadcast industry because we want to avoid an interference of frequencies of different wireless radio stations. So uh, earlier on, the United States gave some uh, regulations to say, um, if you have two radio stations which receive the same uh, broadcast frequency, then it means that you must ensure that the locations must be very far apart so that the broadcast frequency of this one does not interfere in the broadcast uh, frequency of the other one. So I decided to check for um, the map of frequencies uh, from around South Africa. And you can see that this um, map actually obeys um, these regulations because you can see Prieta, it has 94.4 FM. And you can also see clips go from that map. We also have 94.4 FM. But you can see they have the same frequency. I've already been assigned the same frequency, but they are a little bit far apart. If you check another one, um, uh, uh, Bootsman Call is also close um, to um, Fresca, but not that too close. So this shows you that, okay, this particular map, they have the same frequency, but their locations are very far apart. So it illustrates what that regulation says. So a typical practical question that one might ask is, if I have a map that shows me the location of radio transmitters and maybe their coverage or maybe their broadcast area, how can we assign the broadcast frequency to the station such that when two stations have the same frequency, the broadcast of one does not interfere with the broadcast of the other. So that is what we are, that's what would be your practical question. The map I showed you previously already um, captures this thing. But what if someone gives you a new location map? You need to assign this frequency. How do you go about it? And then a typical um, theoretical question that you are going to ask yourself is, OK, now I told you that there are uh, several modeling ideas how to solve this problem. And one of them is we are using the pattern coloring. So that means if a graph can model, if I assume that a graph models this problem, so whereas I change the location, I call the locations the map, look at the coverage areas, how can I determine the packing coloring of G? 
such that each color class is an eye pattern. Don't worry and don't be afraid about that word eye pattern. I'm going to explain that in a moment. So in theoretical, we are going to get to our question, what can we say about the middle order of this pattern coloring? Or what results can we prove so that we can establish some certain things that will help uh, in the practical aspect? So that's um, what the frequency assignment problem is all about. So now let's um, talk about the pattern coloring in a moment. Then let me just give a little bit of a description, uh, definitions, and then we can continue. So this pattern coloring was initially uh, known as the broker coloring, and it was introduced by Gordon the Child in 2008. And then Bresa now decided uh, when they are working on it, trying to model it, this, um, rename this to pattern coloring. And what do we mean by a vacuum coloring? That means if you remember the graph which I've showed you initially, so when you begin to assign colors, different colors to all those nodes, then we call it brackets coloring. So if you want to color the edges, maybe you are giving different colors to those lines, then you call them the edge coloring. So now a K coloring of a particular graph. So once you have a graph, which is like a model of a network, then you are saying that it's a mapping from the vertex or um, set of that graph to different colors. So for example, if K is three, because uh, in our talk, we're going to be looking at just three colors. Then we are saying that we have a three coloring of graph. That is, we can color this graph using three colors. And then what do we mean by an eye pattern? So I have a set, a subset of a vertex set. And if I, the distance between each those uh, subsets, if the distance at least i, so it's a little bigger than i, then you are saying that it's an i pattern. And then now the pattern coloring is simply saying, I have I want to partition. So if I can color this into three, then I take all those ones colored one, take all the ones colored two, take all the ones colored three, then I have a pattern coloring. So, but each of those um, X1, X2, X3, they must obey the fact that it was there. If it's not an eye pattern, then it means it's not a pattern color, it's just an ordinary color. And then we we are uh, we, we will say that a vertex is an eye vertex if the color of that assigned to that vertex is I. So that is what we are defining. So we are always used to proper coloring, which always says that okay. I don't want two adjacent vertices to have the same color. So automatically, our pattern coloring is a proper coloring. But not all proper colorings are pattern coloring. And then now, if we know that if we now have a pattern coloring, uh, pattern coloring, we want to know what would be the pattern chromatic number of that graph. And the pattern chromatic number of a graph is simply the minimum order K of a pattern coloring. So if I have a graph, you can color it with four, or maybe you can color it with three, but the minimum one will tell you that this is okay. So the least K that you can use, the least color, the least number of uh, uh, colors that you have used to color that is the pattern chromatic number. And we say that G is K packable. If the pattern chromatic number is at most, that K that you have. And then it's uniquely, now it comes to what we are interested in. It's uniquely K chiral packable. If now G has the pattern coloring of the K, and by uniqueness, we are simply saying we don't have any other way you can do this coloring. It's up to identity because we are working with level graph. So, for example, if you look at what we call the complete graph on two vertices, which is just the K2, it's just this is the vertex, this is the vertex, you just join them together. Now, it has a pattern chromatic number of two because what I can color this with one or two. But you can interchange them. So you can also color it with two or one. So it, even though that the pattern chromatic number is two, but it's not uniquely because I can just swap the color. So what we want is that when you have this leveling on your graph, it will be the only unique one that we are going to get. So for example, look at this. Although this is not a three, but it's a graph because there is a side to there. But you can see from there and there. Look at the ones colored one. So it obeys. So if I keep the ones colored one, you can see that the distance between each of them is at least two. There is none that is between one. So if you look at the first one and the second one, 
the distance is two. The first one and the other one, the distance is three. And so on any, when you pick any of those one colored one, you will see that their distance that is one. You pick the one colored two as well. You, because this is color two, that means the distance between anyone with color two must be from three, not going to be two, if you want to obey the eye pattern. And then you can have the ones color three, that means any, between any two ones color three, the distance will be four. And so on. That is what we mean by eye pattern. So when you pick all those, so you see, this graph here has a, uh, how, um, has vertices, but I can partition them into the ones colored one, the ones colored two, and then the ones colored three and four. And there must be an eye pattern, that means we now have a pattern from the of G. So I'm going to just move to say I give a little bit of results on threes, and then we go to our main results. So, um, Gora de Tal, um, when they started working on this, they looked at um, the parking symmetric number of paths, of trees, of infinite vertices, and then they were looking at it in terms of the diameter. So, and they submit that if you have a tree that has a diameter two, then the parking symmetric number, and that those kind of trees, we call them stars, then the parking symmetric number will be two. Those trees that have diameter three, then the parking symmetric number will be um, three as well. But for the, those trees that their diameter is four, they try to formulate, they try to establish a formula for the parking symmetric number based on the number of large neighbors and small neighbors of the central vertices. So when we talk about neighbors here, we're talking about those, if you keep a vertex, the ones are the same to them, we call them the neighbors. So you look at, okay, how many neighbors is attached to these ones? And based on that, they establish that a parking symmetric number, except when n is four or eight. And it's also very finding the parking symmetric number when you have a general gram, it has also been proved to be empty hat. And then you, if you want to decide whether it's at most four, it's also an empty complete problem. In fact, Piala et al. also mentioned that the decision whether a tree allows the parking coloring with at most k colors is empty complete. So that's why we restrict ourselves to trees. So we want to look now at the uniquely uh, three chiral pattern. So the starting point was to, uh, of our results is just to make a quick observation to say, okay, if you have a one vertex in your K chiral pattern coloring of a graph, then the degree of that vertex is at most K minus one. Why will it be K minus one? Because you are, five, you are looking at, I want to color this graph with three, maybe three K colors, maybe three, maybe four, and all that. Because you have colored this one, and because we know that they cannot, the, the, the levels of this will not have the same vertex. We have given a distance a, a restriction to say, if this is colored one, the one that will be colored one again will be a distance two from it. So it means that you can now have that the degree is what? At most uh, K minus one. For example, if you are coloring this one with uh, four colors or five colors, then you see that that's what the degree will give you. So, another observation of our result was to say now we don't want to assume a K3. We are looking at, we are looking at the starting point, we say, okay, let's start with three colors. We have a three, and then we want to color this three with three colors, and we want them to be uniquely three chiral patterns. So we are saying that if you have that, your color is a uniquely three kind of pattern of a, a, three, a, a graph, and if you have two adjacent vertices, so for example, X and Y, adjacent means that you have an edge connecting them. And if I assign color two to that one, and then I assign color three to the adjacent one, then all other neighbors of this X other than the Y, they must be colored with one, because that is only three colors that we are interested in. So because why can't they have other colors? Because we really think we want to color this with three. And once you already have two and a to a three, then it's obvious that you cannot have any other. Because if you if you say that the number of x has two, then that means you have two. The distance is no longer um, valid because the distance between color two and another color two must be three. And we are only saying that x is the only number of these one vertices. That's not you can get. And another observation that we make is that whenever you have a three chiral packable graph, then there must be a two vertex adjacent to a three vertex. So you are going to see this when we start 
I'm looking at the characterization and then the basic graphs that we use in establishing this. So look at this empty graph. So I'm um, empty three. I gave you this tree and there is no coloring in it initially. So assume that this is maybe the radio station that we mentioned, and these are the connections between them. And then we know that this is how the distance can be due. So how can we color this using three colors? So it's your task now to, to assist me with coloring this so that we can have we can have we can color them with three colors. And this is the only way you can do it. If you check it, the ones with two is at distance three. The ones with one, they are distance two from each other, and we have only one three. And you can see that the observation I mentioned before, whenever you have a two written to a three, it is still valid. So this is the only way you can color it so that it will be unique. There is no other way that you can do this. So, why not the end of two one? Which end two one? The last. the last two you want the one to one you can change it to two and one. No, it is instead of one two, you can be two one. Okay, it can be two one because there's another two up there aboard. So the difference between that two and two cannot be two, it must be three. So if you put that two in place of one, you can see that it will, or it will no longer be an eye pattern because we want that anyone with color two must be at distance three. Anyone with color one must be at least distance two for each other. And the ones with three will be at distance four. So if you put that two in place of one, then it will, that means the other two are four will not be, um, be, be, two, be two again. Let's see this one. So this is that graph that I showed you initially. And then the, the circle region that is telling you about the broadcast area. And you see, I've translated those locations. I've used the, uh, the nodes to represent them. And then that broadcast area is the interlock. Then we said we can join an edge to them. So, and if I join an edge to them, you can see this is the kind of um, graph that you are going to get. But I'm particularly, I'm particularly interested about uh, three. So I'm seeing the one at the topmost left. I'm going to take a spanning tree of that. I'm not going to, because I don't want the ones that we try to. So I take a spanning tree. It will give me the same um, number of vertices, but I, I, would, I just pick that one for illustration. So if I pick it, I want to assign the frequency. This is like, they are just closer to each other. That means this radio station is closer. And they say, we can we not only want to use three colors, three frequencies. That's what we want to give them. But we must make sure that it's not overlapping. So you can see, the the coloring that I give the I think there is um, a slight uh, missing that last one shouldn't be the three I think it was an error because that so just ignore that but if you do this you can see that if I do one two three I can give um the last one is supposed to be the one yellow that is three so the the yellow one that yellow one at the back of two is supposed to be one, not uh, a, a three. So that's a mistake there. But you can see that if that is one, then it means it's only one three that you're going to have. The ones with twos, they are distance three from each other. The ones with one at least distance two. So it was just like a copy and paste when I was just translating. Sorry, can I just ask them purple ones stay in the middle? Do you use a different spanning? So if you use a different spanning tree, you will have a different coloring, but it must be unique. But I'm just saying for this particular spanning tree, what we want is that we can only have one, two, three, one, two, yeah. one, one, two, and one. No, no, they are distance two. Which one? Or is it from here? Yes, but if I look here, the coloring is a complete graph here at the bottom. This one, yes. Okay. Are those two purple ones, not the two over there? So this one is just three, one, two, one. Okay. So I cut off all this edges that you have seen that you have said. Yeah. But those two over there, they are there. Yes, they are. Yeah. And there's a problem with No, the problem is just one, this three. So I'm saying even though the problem that they're engaged with there, because then they're looking at each other. I'm not getting you from it. 
Very Jason, yeah. Wait, what? Sorry. So here's this three, this is the one I call on one, this is the one I call on two, and the other one is one. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now let's run and then give how we characterize this, um, the, the, how we do the characterization. So the starting point. Sorry to disturb, can we ask that we put the questions till the end of the presentation? Yeah, so that we understand as we go along, so don't get to Okay, thank All you. Right. So let's continue. So our starting point of this um, construction, which is constructive, to um, define what we call the basic tree that we can use to show all other three that I do through the packet. And you can see I have and I'm going to the initial plane. And then I have another one, F2. And I had another one, F3. So I will leave it on the slide for a moment. If you look at this, you observe that each of them are three restrictions are obeyed. And then the, 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 the part, we can only color if you three color, but these are just to do what? To construct all other ones. So what we can going to do next is that if I give you this uh, basic trees, I want to define some operations that will help me to show you all other trees that can be pre uniquely uh, possible. And the operation, the first one is what I call operation one. So I'm saying, given this basic tree, which I've established that is uniquely pre possible, when you see a two bucket, I want you to attach a one bucket to a two bucket. So you can see there is a two bucket there, and I'm attaching a one bucket, a new one bucket to it. If you attach that one bucket to it, it's still uniquely pre-chiral pattern because the distance between the ones, they are from two outwards. The next operation would say, if I have attached a new one bucket to a three bucket that has a two neighbor, so that means go to a three bucket, you can see the green. So I have a three bucket that has a two level. That means this three is adjacent to another bucket that is color two. So I'm going to attach a new one bucket to it. This is a new three that I've already obtained. You will see that it's still unique because the distance conditions are still made and it's still okay. So you can see this is how you can begin to grow. And then expand in your reader to say, this is where I can put a one, this is where I can put a three. The next operation is going to say, attach a new two bucket to a one bucket that has no two level. So you go to your three and you look for a, a bucket that you colored one. And that bucket must not have a two level. Then you can now say, I can be able to attach a two new buckets to it. So I will attach another one, I will color it two. It's growing. This is a new tree that we have got it, and it's still uniquely three kind of pattern. So I can still do three colors for it, and this is still valid. The distances are still valid. The next operation is operation four, which says attach a new tree vertex to a one vertex that is a distance at least three from all the three vertices. So I go to my tree, I look for which one has we can see one or which one has I colored one. Okay, that's what I colored one. I check you must be at least your distance from another one giving three must be at least three. Once it is that, then I can attach a three new buckets to it. Because once I attach the three new buckets, you can now see that the distance between the three and another one three is now four. And then I'm, I'm growing it like that. Then the next one will be. Let you now, this one is a little bit a little bit longer. So I'm saying if you have a three bucket in your graph now, so go into your into the three, look for the one that has a three bucket with color three. I can add a path to it. So if I can add that path, I can color, I can assign colors one to one to this path. Now let's pause a bit and check. I have a color three and I've attached one to one to it. Now, the question that you're going to ask yourself is that one that is at the last part, can I, 
can I ask, can I um can it take another color? Can this take three? No, it cannot take three because the difference between the one to three is now three, so it can't take three. Can I assign it color two? I can't assign it color two because the distance of it to the one of two is one, so it will obey. So it means that this is a valid color and it's still okay. So that means it's still unique and I can move on with that one. So at each point in stage, when you are drawing your feet and when you are doing this, you must pause and check. Is there a different way I can color this? If there's a different way you can do it, then it means that's not a valid color because it's no longer unique because we want the unique one. It, 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 because we are working with unique name. So um, operation six, PP also established to say, if you have a three vertex that doesn't have a two neighbor, then we can attach a path to that three vertex in this order that we have described it, and we are going to give this color one to one. Be careful and um, be careful how we define this uh, part. It's not like the other one. So you can see that the edge that we are doing it was UV2, unlike in, in, the, uh, in the other one, it was UV1. So you must be careful how we define the two. So now when you do this, you have attached one, two, one. This is the part, but this is we say that the V2 must be the one adjacent to this. So you can see this is a three adjacent to a two. And the distance of the two from the other two is still at least three, and it obeys our pattern. This one cannot take three, it cannot take two, and it's still valid. So this is how you draw your location. This is how you now can plan of how to assign frequency. So if you start with a small region, and then you can begin to say, okay, this is where we can put a radio transmitter. This is the frequency we can give it. But this is basically if you are using three colors. But if it's more than four colors or four five or five colors, then you can now work towards them. And that's also part of our uh, future research. Now, operation seven, which we can have different, we can have different variations of this operation seven, but because in the presentation, I decided just to give it one, but in the paper, I we extended it to like about three more variations. So we said, look for an edge that whereby one is colored three, one is colored one. So you can see I highlighted it with the two lines. So if you look for these two edges, we can delete this edge and then add a path one, two, one, three into it. So we are saying if you have an edge where you have color three and color one, the degree of you is at least two, then you can delete that edge and then add something like this to grow it. And this is still valid coloring. Everything is still obeyed and that is still good. So if you have these operations, either you apply them to the F1, which is our basic one, which we are using, or you apply them to F2, or you apply them to F3, you are still going to get a uniquely free kind of packable tree. So that's what we are saying here. So on our results, we claim that what this graph, which I've defined initially, those basic graphs, which are called F1, F2, F3, they are uniquely free kind of packable. And we say if you now, if a, if a uniquely three type of packable tree is obtained from a tree using any of these, uh, using in particularly the operation O7, then it also was uniquely three kind of packable. We also have some other results to say that if I apply these operations which are defined, maybe you do zero operation or maybe you add one or two just repeatedly or constructively you will still arrive at what the resulting tree that you are going to get will also be uniquely three kinds of pattern. And then we said any tree, this is our big theory which we prove, it's uniquely three kinds of pattern if and only if it's obtained from our basic graphs which we have defined and then by zero or more applications of the operations which we have established now. Okay. And then the other ones that we have, I'm also, I'm also mindful of my time, is that whenever you have um, a, 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 a sub tree, and then that, and then that sub tree is really the kind of table, and then you have a vertex, which is a three vertex, then we are saying that for any coloring, which we have a three packing of that tree, all the three vertices are those ones who are what that are from their distance from B is a multiple of four. 
And this actually, this other lemma is a, uh, a direct consequence of this one, because we are saying, if you have this, then for all you that is in your uh, vertex set of your X, then the three final compatible will only be three, if and only if the other coloring is also three. Now, let's look at um, briefly the monotonicity of this packing coloring that we have defined, because Bressa introduced the concept of monotone coloring, because um, when, you, when you have a graph and you have a coloring on that one, so if the ones that you color one is bigger than the ones with color two and bigger than the ones with color three up to your last coloring, then you are going to say that that coloring is monotone. And they establish um, some results on monotone coloring to say for any graph and any eye where you have this, then there is a pattern coloring in such that this one must be uh, greater than this. They also say that, okay, that they have found a class of three where T, a K is greater than two, that does not have a monotone coloring. In fact, these three actually help us in, in, in testing our, our coloring. And what we have is that I now went to that F1, F2, F3 that we have. I labeled them U, V, X, Y, and the colors are still basic colors that we know. But the reason why I let out this new VXY is just for you to link it with the trees that Greta established. So if you look here, they are uniquely two type of packables. And if you look at F1, the color ones are bigger than the color twos. And the color twos are bigger than the color three. So the order, the cardinality of those with color one, so you have four, and then those with color two is two, those with color two, so four is better than two and bigger than one. So it's one or two. Same thing in F, two, and all that. So we are now saying if we apply our operations here, we are going to show that we can obtain classes of uniquely three type of packable trees with both monotone coloring and non monotone coloring, respectively. How do we do that? So these three on the left side is actually the three that Bressa and and the co and, and co and established initially. So you can see how they define the three. They said, let this three be a class of three that consists of three parts on vertices U, V, X, and Y. Each of U and V having two leaves. When we say leaves, it means that those ones can only have degree one. And then there are K parts of length two that emerges from what? From one. So you can see this is part of lane two, this is part of lane two. So if you look at this, what we try to do is to say, okay, can we assign color to this? Let's, so if you look at this one, in fact, you can easily look that this is obtained from our F1. So you can see that Bressels, if we look at our F1, it looks like as if we can do some operations that we have described on F1 to get these three that Andresa is illustrated. So by doing most of those operations, we get these three and we do our coloring. But if you check, the number of three will now be what? Bigger than the number of two. So you now have that it's not monotone, even though that the pattern coloring is uniquely three type pattern, pattern, but it's not monotone. And then if you look at this other one, the one that we, so we extended their own version to say, okay, and we now establish another one that will now be monotone. And what did we do? We now define the one that we call TL of K to be the cast class of trees that consists of a three part on vertices U, V, X, and Y with U and I think to two leaves and we have there are KL and K parts of lane two emerging from what? D and Y respectively. So if you look at this, this one cannot take three, those two. Even these three cannot take two. So it's uniquely, um, so even if you don't have that line to say we can extend them, but you think it's where we are going to stop. But if you check this one, the number of ones will be bigger than the number of twos and they will be bigger than the number of three. And this is now a uniquely three-time packable three that has a monotone coloring. 
So from this, you can build as many as many plus of three that you can think of. Whereas the previous one, it's uniquely taken operable, but they are not what? Monotone. So I, in, in going forward, the question that we are asking ourselves is, now that we have worked with K equals to three, can we investigate the uniquely taken operable for those K that are bigger than four? So we just started to say, okay, let's start with just assigning three colors, three frequencies, or maybe as you can think of it. Can we, when you're giving, giving a network, I just want to just work with three colors. Can we now move from three to four and then do uniquely take IO packable with this for all K? And then uh, we go back to the example that I started with one of our basic trees. And we are looking at, okay, how can we? progress can we just think of this so if you look at this our basic example when k is equal to three and look at this one which are of dignity we have the ones shaded and the unshaded ones so when you have the unshaded bucket we are simply saying okay that means this unshaded bucket must have many unshown leave neighbors so that the degree will be at this scale so we are attaching so these two and three if you look at it from here that means we can have add more ones to it. And they are so those buckets that we have two and three, they cannot have what? Um, um, their color cannot be one. And then these ones will be the ones that are going to attach together. Then the ones that are very bold, we are saying they don't have any unhidden neighbors. They are just going to be as they are. And we now look at using some computer to now say, what can we generate? Let's use that same pattern. And we look at k equals to four, k equals to five, k equals to six, k equals to seven. So you can see, it means that these three and ones, when k equals to four, you can see that it formed a pattern. So we are seeing a pattern, but presently we are working on k equals to four to see, okay, how can we classify or how can we characterize uniquely. For anyone bigger than seven, we have not actually figured out what it will look like. But at least for K equals to four, five, six, it looks as if we can make a progress. But now these ones do not have a, 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 any hidden level. But you see other ones, it means we can assign them some level. But now we can begin to grow. We say pitch color if we, uh, if we start growing this one, pitch color. And then we can maybe now try to say, okay, we can form our basic Fi for when k is equals to four, or maybe you can form for when k is equals to five, or when k is equals to six, and then you can see what can you then prove? Can you establish some results on this one? So that's where we are currently, and currently we are making progress, and we hope that maybe before the end we can also conclude on the four ones, but some people can also take time to work on k equals to five, k equals to six. And so on. And just a few references and just to add for them. And then the paper is also there. And then that's where we are going to end. And thank you for listening. And I can now attend to your patients now. Oh, I raise a hand. Uh, uh, should I stop immediately or when it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, that was a beautiful talk. Uh, uh, very enjoyable. Um, uh, so my understanding is that you were talking about those graph that has only way to color packing. Uh, I was wondering about the opposite. Uh, what if, uh, 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 is it, is it to, is gonna be, is it going to be trivial? Is there anything known about graphs that has the largest number of way 
of uh, color packing. I mean, let's say for a given uh, uh, chromatic uh, uh, number, can we, is, is there anything known about this? Do you think this will be trivial, will be interesting? Among all graph of a given chromatic uh, packing number, which one would be, what kind of structure will have the largest possibility of uh, packing? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I, I hear you, I hear you, Eli. Uh, I, I think I haven't talked about that one, so I'm not going to, to but I think it's what, what it, it's what investigating to know which kind of graphs or what, what, what would be the structure of the ones that will give us uh, what you are looking for. Maybe, but for now, I haven't thought about it. I'm not going to say whether I know whether it's trivial or not, but it's what we it's what investigating. So when we investigate those particulars, then we can say whether it's trivial or non-trivial. But can I come here, Alex? Can I come in here? Okay, yes, you can. Um Eric, if you look at Z3, the packing chromatic number of Z3 is infinite. Hmm. Yeah, continue. So, we can hear that. No, Z3, Z3 is infinite. So, the passing command is like um, infinite, that is Z3, it's, 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 it's infinite. You can go on with no deficient. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you help me with the questions so that I can do that? Yes, yes. Uh, I was uh, initially un unmuted, but. Uh, Eric, are you still coming in with the question of uh, the, the previous end? Okay, yeah. It's... Sorry, I've lowered my hand now. Lowered now. Okay, that's fine. Right. Any any other co questions, um, comments? Somebody in the room. Uh, I won't be able to see the ones who are physical. If you can pick them from there, then that will be fine. But uh, if you are online, can you indicate as instructed? Uh, by raising your hand, then we can pick pick on you. So the difference. So um, somebody in the room is asking what the different color capture is doing. Like color that capture the frequency of the broker station or the broker transmission. So if you go back to this example, I gave you this year, you can see here. That um, Preska has 94.4 FM. So Preska is my node, right? So it's a location typical node. So the 94.4 is a column. So I can decide to assign one that 94.4. My one in my column. So you check to my dropping, it has 94.4 FM. So you see that they have the same column, but the allocation is very fast. And it obeys that decision because if I have one to follow one, it was three. That's what it's color five. I change this by putting my node. It might not be color one, it might be color five. So anyone with color five will get the same thing. Very far, but you see, those ones with very color one can be here. Let's say, and they are very close. So if we just put our egg, it can be from UJ to SABC. So UJ and Bed can have the same sequence, but SABC is not having the other one. But it cannot intersect. So it's just the colors representing the two. So when we say we are doing the color, we are saying, I start with the location, I don't know what the difference is. But I know where the 
Okay. Um, do we still have any other uh, reflections from the participants? All right. From uh, from the online one, I don't seem to see any any hands. Uh, awesome. So, um, so when you you say that for you to Okay, so yes, and that's what we're saying. So it can change once it changes. But the smaller ones are bigger than the two, but the um, but the color two is less. So that particular concern is already so because the model for you to go in and all the ones is from the one, but greater or equal to the ones is what's greater or equal. So it's like it's moving like this. So like say 10 greater than seven greater than five. But now I have like 10 greater than five, and five is greater than eight. So that is the way. Oh, you want to switch? Oh, I see what you are saying. However, I don't think i But now, from the eye general, if you are. So this is Broton decrease, right? So I'm, I'm asking when you look at it from the perspective, I don't know. Is this thing called Broton? So it will be called that if C K. That's what you call so in the reverse order. So it's normal. So once your color was the first color, I'll show you. Once the first color, then what is going on? So once you have found one in the first color, that's what you that is so if I doubt if it is possible to this actual because of the sense condition. So because of how we have defined that so oh. if you dip the package, so anyone should follow one with that distinct two. So you see this so that it will have more time. So you can't have more time because now you're looking at the one between the What if the graph is very similar? Alex, do you still have any questions? Um, from the floor, is do you still have any questions from the floor, oh, Alex? Okay. So I think I already explained. I think somebody asked me a question, but I think somebody in the room asked them to the sit and wait and say, the frequency that was the question. Can you read the question then? Um, so they're asking in the real world scenario on what the coloring means exactly. The network is not stable. Uh, I will not do with PSM details. Okay. So it's like I'm also repeating what the colors. 
So that's what I'm saying. So I went back to this illustration here to say this back from um back from a South African and both of them have the same four point four by four point four, but when you look at where they are located, see that they are far apart, but even though they are the little thing like Paris or Spice and Spice and very small all that. So if I start with that you don't know and you want to keep so they are saying we have identified this location as we have the that we are going to see. Then our duty is to say, can you just prevent what you get? You want to just have the but we don't want the experience to do. So all you need to do is that you can now work on it. And how is going to be I don't think you can now translate it. Um, take it. Okay. And then you check that it was easy because it was transferred. So the house was people. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure. Do we still have any other questions there uh, in the interest of, of time? All right, so uh, I think this uh, marks the end of our presentation.